Whether it is in the crypto space or not, we hear nowadays a lot of people saying, I am not that interested in Bitcoin, but I'm more interested in the technology behind it, the blockchain. Well, let me tell you that a block of chain is just one of the fundamental technologies behind Bitcoin together with a decentralized algorithm such as proof of work, consensus mechanism, public cryptography and so on. And we achieve decentralization. That is why we call the blockchain of Bitcoin an open blockchain because it is decentralized, censorship resistant, open to innovation, neutral, uh, global and so on. It is the process, the how we save information or we put information in the blockchain that it makes the system amazing and decentralized together with all the other technologies and one of them that I have just mentioned is a decentralized algorithm such as proof of work. In this video we're going to be talking about mining proof of work, what it means to mine by yourself and how mining pools work. I am sure this video will take your knowledge to the next level so stay with me. This video is brought to you by Brains, the company behind Slashpool, the world's first mining pool. Brains also stands behind Brains OS, which is the very first full open source Linux based system for cryptocurrency embedded devices. Okay, let's talk about mining. We know that in Bitcoin it's all about keeping the transactions flowing in the system in a decentralized way. It is about the transfer of the right to spend the Bitcoin from one person to the other one in a decentralized way. So, for example, when I initiate a transaction that I want to spend or send my mom, for example, 0.5 Bitcoin, that information is going to be propagated in the system and the nodes, the miners that are in charge of confirming those transactions, they are going to initiate their work. They are going to see that there are many different transactions that have to be confirmed. Those transactions, they are going to be hanging in something that is called the Bitcoin memory pool, the mempool. The, the miners are going to go to the mempool and they're going to pick the transactions they want and they're going to construct a candidate block, okay? So they initiate the process. They are going to construct a candidate block and they are going to put all the transactions that they want to confirm, including the Coinbase transaction. The Coinbase transaction, it is a transaction that they are going to pay themselves if they win the competition, if they are able to mine the block and extend the block of chain. In this transaction that they are going to pay themselves, it is like a paycheck that they pay themselves. Here we have two rewards because miners are economically incentivized to do their work honestly. That we have the block reward, which is 12.5 Bitcoin and all the fees of all the transactions that are in this block together some here as well. Okay, so usually in the Coinbase transactions you see a little bit more than 12.5 Bitcoin. It's because all the fees of all the transactions included in the block are also in that uh, Coinbase transaction as well. Okay, so as I said all the miners are in like in a competition to confirm the transactions, mine the next block the fastest and extend the block of chain. What do they have to do in order to win the competition? They have to find a piece of information that it is like a puzzle, a problem that they need to solve that is called the nonce, okay? This is a piece of information that is included in the header of the block, okay, that they need to find. And the nonce is going to make that the hash of the header of the block is going to look in a particular way. We have already discussed before what a hash is in this channel. Go and check out the last video because we explain all the characteristics of a hash. But let me tell you something. A hash is like a name of the, of the block. It's a summary of all the information that is in this block as well. And it's what allows us to cryptographically link all the blocks in the blockchain together. All right, because the process of mining is also making a double hash of the header of the block, which includes also part of the, uh, the hash of the previous block. All right, so we said that the nonce is going to make that the hash of the header of the block is going to look in a particular way. So let's say that this block is called B, okay? We're going to say that the hash function of B is going to start with a number of zeros. 
a number of zeros. And these zeros, they represent the difficulty of the network to mine, okay? Because it is based on probability. If a lot of miners suddenly start mining, that means that more miners are going to be able to find the nonce and mine faster. Each block has to be mined every 10 minutes average. So the difficulty has to be adjusted and it is adjusted every two weeks or more precisely every 2016 blocks. Now, as I said, uh, the hash function also something that I wanted to tell you is that all hash functions, they have a cryptographic property and that property is that they are one way. They are one way. And this means that if we know that the hash function needs to starts with a number of zeros, there is no way for us to go back and see which piece of information is generating those zeros. And that piece of information is what they need to figure out. That is the nonce. That is the problem that they need to solve with a proof of work, with their hashing power, and the miner who is able to do that the fastest is going to win the competition, is going to get the two rewards that we know he has, and he's going to confirm the transactions that are in this block and extend the block of chain, okay? That information is propagated in the system and he wins. Now, with time, mining, the cost of mining went up and it also depends where you are geographically, how much uh, to mining could cost you. So a lot of people choose to mine also in a mining pool. Up next, we're going to be learning how to mine in a mining pool and everything about it. Okay, mining pools, they started when the difficulty for mining it started to increase to a point in which slower miners, it would take them way too low to find the next block. So what they started to do is to put the resources together, pull the resources to increase the chances to find the next block. And they also started to share and distribute the reward depending on how much computing power, how much hashing power they contributed to achieve the goal. That is what a mining pool is on a general level. It is like winning a lottery. The chances are way too slow, but if you pull all the resources together, put the resources together with more people, chances will go up, okay? The functions of a mining pool are the following. They take the member hashes, they look for block rewards, and most importantly, they record how much work each participant is, is doing because once they find, they find a block, they are going to assign the rewards to all the participants proportionally, as I said, depending on how much hashing power they contributed to achieve the goal, okay? And one of the most important things that I want to highlight here is that miners mine differently by running a, so a, a pool software. Why? They perform hashes just for the pool, and I'm going to explain to you what that means next. Okay, another way of explaining what a mining pool is the following. Let's say that we have a lot of people in a room and each one of those individuals, they have two dice. We're going to form a team, a group of people, and we're going to start playing a game. The idea is that each one of those individuals, they start throwing the dice and the goal is to get a certain number that is below a target, okay? Let's put it this way. So we have a group of people, which is a pool, we are a team, okay? And each one of those individuals has two dice. The game is uh, consists in the following. Each one of them, they are going to start throwing the dice and the goal is to achieve a certain number that is below a target, okay? And here is uh, what I explained you before. The target represents the difficulty target to mine, okay? And the number is the hash that I explained you before. So because we know that the hash of the header of the block starts with a number of zeros. And this number of zeros, they represent the difficulty of the network to mine. The hash has to be below a certain target that we know that is the difficulty of the network, okay? And we're going to start throwing the dice until we have a number that matches the 
the, the target of the, of the network. All right, perfect. Now, we know that each one of these individuals, they contributed work to achieve the goal. So how do we know how much they have contributed? Here is what I wanted to explain you to you. We have two difficulties. We have one difficulty then, that is the difficulty of the network, of the network to win the competition between all the miners to mine the block and get the reward. And then we have a second difficulty just for the pool, just for the pool in order to keep track of all the contributions and the work that each one of the participants are doing in order to achieve the goal, okay? And for the last part of this video, we're going to be talking about how can people get paid when joining a mining pool. There are many different kinds of payment ways, uh, but today we're going to mention just two of them. Paper share is the most common one. This is an instant payout for the contribution that you have provided to the work to achieve the goal, as we have mentioned before. And the other one is full paper check for, for share. Here also miners get the transactions fees that are collected over a period of time and they are added to the block reward and they are distributed also um, through all the miners in the mining pool, okay? As I said, there are many different kinds of ways people can get paid when joining a mining pool, all right? The second thing that I want to mention next um, in this final part of the, the video are advantages and disadvantages uh, when joining a mining pool. Advantages, you have a more stable income for sure, you have lower cost, cost of mining. We're going to be talking about this mining economics in our next video, which is a super important topic that mo a lot of people are requesting. And you have potentially generating, you have the odds to make a higher income are also there, depending on many factors that we're going to be talking about in the next video, as I said. And some disadvantages are the following. Pools may suffer interruptions, block rewards have to be shared, and uh, yeah, sometimes you can have uh, and favorable um, reward structure in, in the pool as well. This all depends on many factors that we're going to be mention mentioning in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope it took your knowledge to the next level. My name is Catalina Castro from Buenos Aires, Argentina. I thank you for watching and I look forward to keep on learning with you and see you in the next video. Ciao!